I think it, it exceeded my expectations. I didn't expect it to be so practical. I think I was expecting this as what's kind of the six month vision or the 12 month vision? How do we, you know, what's, what's the thing that's coming that we should prepare for? How do we, in a more broad sense, prepare for the future? Mm. I didn't expect it to be what are the steps we are taking this week, next week, a month later to get there and also define what there is. Mm. So it totally exceeded my expectations in things we can apply now that make a difference now. Look, there were snippets of things that were completely new to me that just make sense. Like, how the fuck did I not know about this? The whole product model is one example we have given. We never really had a concept of a market category or creating a, uh, a category for ourselves. So completely new concept. And I think some of the tools about how our customers will think about us, one thing that I loved one of our very first meetings that really wowed me, that was an aha moment before we even engaged this, this program, was um, how do you get customers uh, thinking about us as a, um, an OPEX expense um, as opposed to to just some capex type um, experimental project mm. so that wowed me i'm like wow i never thought about that before how a buyer might think about us so initial expectations for programs like this are often set by the past and the past programs i've been part of are often say they've got pre-work and whatnot but what they really focus on is planning you know mm. what they'll do is take the kind of existing strategy from within the room mm. and spend maybe a couple of hours mm. on that and that that's sort of what sets your expectations for programs like this mm. but this is totally different we spent so much time coming up with strategy and you know it wasn't just about day-to-day -day planning how are we going to execute we're all capable of doing that it was completely focused on getting things right for our go-to-market for our whole product um, and for alignment throughout the team so it completely exceeded my expectations because we spent all of our time on that and we did a lot of work to go into it mm. um, you know we just didn't get in the room and uh, sort of recap where we were it was all very focused work okay. the key difference for me with this program was that it was fit for purpose so to our stage to our current market development to our team size to our resources somehow we i think we're in session two when we started to look at the whole product model and we kind of had this moment where we all looked around the table and were like, where the hell has this been? But also secretly, I'm going, let's just do this tomorrow before we've even continued with the program. Like, let's introduce this now and just try it while we're learning how we should introduce it because organically it felt like the right thing to do. And I've never had an experience like that in a sort of an, and if you call it an education-based type of program, you were actively trying to teach us things as well as get us to draw out our own insights. I've never felt that something was so fit for purpose to our stage, our development, and us probably as a team as well, like how you could get that information from us. What's different about the program for me is um, a number of tools. Some of the tools are familiar to us. So I think I like the difference you. was not just looking at these tools and activities in isolation, there was a journey. So it was doing one, doing some thinking, seeing how that fits into the next one, going back to this one, redeveloping it based on new information that's come to life. So there was a series of activities that at times we honestly thought was a bit chaotic and go, why are we going here when we should have been here? It, it, it comes to light. They understand why when the program is, is evolved and when well, you get further down the, down the journey. Everything got connected in the end, did it? Mm -hmm. Was that when the But those moments of realisation happen throughout the program. There's moments when we're like, hold on, why are we doing this now? We should have done this then. Or that it comes to light with more information and more brainstorming and more post-it notes that we capture. The compound effect mm. is what we're talking about. Is yes. That uh, I think that the, the as you go through the program, there is a compound effect of your work mm. and you get out what you put in. But the more work that you put in, the more clarity that you'll receive. Hi, I'm Elliot Donison. I'm the Managing Director and Co-Founder of Payble. Hey, I'm James Andrew Smith. I am CTO and Co-Founder of Payble. Hey, I'm John, John White, Co-Founder and COO of Payble. Uh, my favourite aha moment was probably the leverage model or the bowling pin model mm. um, <laughs> for market development. So implicitly, I'd understood that model. That was my intuition of how we did this, but actually laying it out and yeah. putting the names on the pins yeah um that was a great aha moment for me the other one was probably the whole product model and understanding identifying the gaps and identifying where we should plug the gaps ourselves and where we shouldn't plug the gaps ourselves and the acceptance of how we embrace partners to deliver for us rather than probably the, the other way i was rudimentally thinking about partners was you know do we do it or do they do it but really it's what are we delivering together so whole product was the second one absolutely yeah i was really resistant to partners i've seen so many startups see partners as the solution and then they outsource their accountability to a partner that has 
no real incentive to collaborate or it's mis- there's some incentive now, but it's misaligned. Correct. And so the, the partner process, looking at how we bundle products and move partners from complementary through to bundled. And then as a business analyze where we could actually do that and where we could, what partners we have, we could take on that journey. And there's the insights from there changed how we're operating our go-to-market strategy, how we're operating some of our product development strategy as well. So bringing partners into whole product, but being educated on how and why and being able to justify that to myself without feeling like it's, oh, we're relying on a partner if they don't do it. What do you do then? Because that's kind of the alternative that you're often looking at. Most partners are really suppliers yeah. if you look at how the world thinks of partners and yeah. actually identifying who true partners can be and then aligning the business to the win-win within those partners and making sure it fits. That was the insight. I'm, I'm certainly familiar from product roadmap perspective and the tools associated with that. What we did um, as part of this program was overlaying or preparing it in conjunction with a go-to-market roadmap. So it's not product-centric, well, at least it's not uh, completely um, what are the technical and product deliverables? Correct. It's overlaying the go-to-market strategy or building it in conjunction with the go-to-market strategy. Look, we're all saying whole product model. So I think a lot's been said on that. You know, not just us, but our teams find it very useful as well. You know, teams will be looking around the business at problems and then thinking how are we going to solve this down the track? And so I think it's nice for them to look at this and go, okay, you know, our leadership team thought of this mm. um, and, you know, the solution is really clear, but importantly, that might you know, leverage a partner so they understand where to put their focus. The other highlight um, for me, which hasn't been mentioned yet, is the market map. Um, I found that the market map was a really useful exercise for validating previous work. It was really good to see once we put it together that we had our partners, we had our exact, you know, target customers defined, how that all worked together, particularly for my mind, which is quite, I guess, process and technical, it was really uh, it made it all click. So before the program, we didn't have clarity on how we would go from targeting a smaller segment, yeah. which was our niche that we were doing well in, into a larger, I want to say early adopter into mainstream, <laughs> but like, I don't think that... Give a car before, like yeah. the vernacular is a known. Yeah. When, when I think of before the program, I think of the whole product model. So, you know, I think we didn't have that term, terminology okay. at the time, Yeah. but we were particularly with delivery on our early customers, we were thinking about how do we carry that forward to our newer customers and what do we need to do, not just in terms of what we build, Mm. but all the things that we need to do in the wider business and how we align them Uh to succeed. And so that was, I think, a key thing that the program had great tools for was to help align the business um, and then have a framework in which to talk about that okay. and a framework in which to build upon so okay. that we could uh, build that three-year plan but with knowledge of how to fill those gaps. I think we had a problem initially where we had a, what we thought was a good product and we knew who our potential competitors were but we were trying to define our point of difference in a much clearer way and we didn't quite have the framework to do that. Key one for me was accepting that we're not better, we're different and we're doing something different and that's something to be proud of and define our own category. Obviously conscious of how our customers define us, who they compare us to, those are our competitors, but accepting that our language doesn't and our framework internally doesn't have to be we're better than X because it's we're different to X because and that's quite a powerful position to come from as you approach what you feel you need to achieve in the business because you're building out a difference rather than trying to beat someone else. We we had a very high level uh, roadmap in our collective minds um, of where we needed to get to but we hadn't yet backed that up with deep thinking, cross-examined the market we were selling to and yet we hadn't turned it into an actionable plan to deliver. Yeah, to expand on what John said about the market, we are a double-sided, in a sense, a double-sided platform in that we have both billers and then consumers using the platform. And so when we have, you know, two sides of a marketplace using, it was, uh, there were some great tools for working out what would be important and then prioritizing that in our roadmap. So really thinking about it from what are the pain points and then being able to, you know, use the exercises to carry that through so that it's in our strategy as well and that we do have that. We know the product that we want to build, but we are also building to the right pain points for both sets of customers that we serve. On the process, I remember as a child being dropped in a desert and it was incredibly hot. And then every few hundred meters, I'd be attacked by an animal. And this was much worse than that. This was was the animal (laughs) meat. Was that anyone? You answer on the first. <laughs>
But no, I think um, in terms of the process, Josephine, um, what it forced us to do was one thing, and just take a step back out of the business and actually, from the day to day, the grind, think and give ourselves space to think and challenge each other. And I think certainly with your help as well, Josephine, asking probing questions to make sure we are thinking, not just agreeing with each other or disagreeing with each other, giving us space to really think outside of our day to day. Yeah, so the, the process of... I guess you'd say being educated and then that being reinforced through activities and then us grouping up on the activities and, and with our homework and then coming through to a workshop with you to almost you know check the understanding but then align the work to each other and you would draw out those insights. I actually found the process really effective. It was, there was probably a realisation a couple of weeks in that, wow, we were really enjoying this and how valuable it was recognizing we wanted to give it more time and we went through a process of clearing our calendars to do that so it's probably an endorsement of its effectiveness mm -hmm. but also a recognition that it's the program itself was a core business activity for the period of program it wasn't you know you know an hour a one hour session with an advisor once a week that effectively is a call you turn up to no it was an active process it was actually a project in the business that we all collaborated on the, the difference here is you are able to both educate encourage us to debate draw out insights and then collaborate on the solution but do it with all the right context so i actually felt that you understood our business implicitly mm. through that process which allowed us to not often you have a feeling with people when they're not experienced with startups and they talk about all the right frameworks and how the approach is and you go yeah that's great you don't get it and there's no ability to bridge that gap in a, in a one hour conversation cool. of how with a startup, how you go to market. When you have no effectiveness data, it's a very, very different sales pitch to when you have years and years of it, right? just as an example. Yeah. Um, so I felt you implicitly understood the business through the process. And that actually allowed us to rely on you and your insights and let you contribute both to teaching us how to contribute and educating us the right way to contribute to each other in that process, mm -hmm. but also to learn from you and get your insights on how we could approach things from your experience in the market. I like the structure of the program. I participated in a lot of startup uh, programs before in previous businesses. You know, the scaling up comes to mind quite a few times. One of the failures of those programs is that they don't get as involved in the business, um, but also the homework isn't structured or often the facilitators of those programs don't structure it in a way where you know you have to turn up with the work done um, and so one of the things i really like about how this program was structured was the exercises were relevant they weren't just is another way of managing your project plan or your existing vau activities that's not what this program is about this program is about you know deepening your understanding of your market your business and your strategy and having a set of tools to then reevaluate change as the business goes on and so i actually really looked forward to every part of the program you know that you know we joked about the homework a lot i, I really enjoyed being teachers pet with homework i found that it, each exercise brought some kind of unique insight but importantly they built on each other each week you know that every exercise we did would build on the previous one in a way that made sense and uh, I should call out not just the program itself, but for our business, because you were tailored how the program is structured for us based on your understanding of the business. So I found the structure great. Yeah, yeah but even just to add to that, the tools and activities, we kind of chopped and changed a little bit based on the life stage of our business, the earlier discussions we've had. Um, I think there was one example when we started with the three-year roadmap and brought it down to a one-year roadmap to really focus our attention and then go back out wide again as well. So I think the ability to not follow a cookie-cutter model, um, but a really um, fit for purpose model um, through a series of activities and tools. I found yeah. the experience fun. Yeah. It's fun. Like, yeah. I think we've all made a commitment to having fun at work, like genuinely stopping and trying to take time to you know, enjoy each other's company, but actually enjoy the work and laugh. And when you're working late nights and you're kind of laughing about some of the stuff you're doing and why and maybe some of the mistakes you've made. But I think you, you fit into that framing really well. I also found you incredibly approachable, as in, that made us willing to share at the same time as the way you would challenge us was very effective. So some of those challenges were just, you know, you might, or you might then just say, and then, and then like draw it out further. Or as you sometimes would just say, what? Like, you know, get to the point, like, what is it? What's the insight? We actually found ourselves in some of the homework going on. Oh, wish Josephine was here just to quickly push on this inside a bit. Um, because you were fun and effective. I was what? Fun. Fun and effective. And effective. <laughs> fun and defective. De defective? Excuse me. I said effective. <laughs> I think uh, if I can uh, talk about the experience with Josephine, it was the multi-dimensional engagement. So 
having the videos that we could watch in our own time, having the transcripts we could read in our own time, um, having the face-to-face -face time that we could ask questions. And, you know, there were times when we'd get stuck and we're mm -hmm. like, you help us here and you, you'd help us on get unstuck. So I think that was, that was really good. Um, I definitely enjoyed the face-to-face -face time, the in-person face-to-face -face time much more. Yeah, there's more post-it notes and whiteboards we've got to document. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I valued the face-to-face -face time. If you're watching this, pay extra for the travel time. <laughs> the chickens? <laughs> oh, yeah, wow, the eggs, those were great. And I was going to say about working with you, that was great. End of session. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first time I've heard of in person. End of session. <laughs> end of session. Okay, end of again. We, yeah, we, we knew you'd imprinted these concepts in our brain yeah. when we started saying the words I know. how you say them yeah um, <laughs> and what? you don't it's not an accent thing it's a you will you will enunciate the words so <laughs> alignment so are we in alignment yeah so the the guys have already mentioned uh you know being able to work with you not just in person but mm. with the materials online and mm. then the support that we get as we're going through the homework so that was great and mm. it was like you were part of the business because you took the time to get to know our business but I should say very quickly. Um, I think or what I found really good about working with you was the way that you would push us, not necessarily lead us if we didn't need it. Like if we needed a little bit of a push in a direction, you would give it. Not just showing us the examples and having us copy them, but making sure that what we did was tailored to us and uh, you know, either pulling, pushing us, just giving us the right nudge in the right direction to get to an outcome that was genuinely ours. Mm. Um, and so I, I found that um, very insightful and very helpful. So okay. Fit for purpose, and I would specifically to our stage of company development. So that would be the number one thing. The second thing was you engage in a way that I think founders can respond to. So what does that mean? you didn't deliver a twenty-page PDF the report of, and yet if you told me at the start that this process would involve six hours of homework a week followed by a lecture or something i would have said no but that wasn't even though we were doing six hours of work and then having a, you know watching a video it didn't feel that process it felt like a way we could all engage with tailor made <laughs> fit for purpose tailor made fun comprehensive no you're right no i think it is the uh the 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 the, the stepping stones integrated no it's not the, the, right okay. before that the one around how we went on a journey and we had a series of aha moments uh -huh. and it all comes together connected connecting all the activities because for the, something uh, to be all in alignment it also has to be connected <laughs> the uh compound the, structure of alignment compounding the three takeaways from the program in terms of what the program was Probably. so structured preparation that would definitely be one. Highly relevant exercises. And then, I guess, a focused output. Focused output is so important, right? Things we can use now is a big one for me. Mm -hmm. Practical. So things we can... I think of that as things we can use now. It's easy to dream about when you have more resources and you've mm -hmm. already got 20, 30, 50 customers and all the great things you can achieve. And then it's daunting to think, well, how do you get there? Which part of that do we do now? When we could take those outputs and not modify them to be our plan but actually agree those were the plan for now it was perfect look i think if the theme was getting a business of our life stage to cross the chasm we were focused on relevant activities for our stage of business which is not necessarily something that you would get in other programs so that you do the pre-work the, the pre-work makes so much sense you've got a shared context before you get in the room like if you want to be paying to learn a shared context inside the room then sure don't watch the video but watch the video and do the exercises ahead so that you can spend that time and do the exercise together so that you can all benefit from the exercise itself rather than learning what the exercise is. And, you know, is your first version of anything the best version? Probably not. Strategy doesn't exist in the vacuum. I mean, it's all, every, every idea is perfect in someone's own head, but you've got to make it work throughout the team. Um, and so if you're going to be executing a strategy, particularly in a technology startup, I think it's pretty relevant that the CTO and leadership team be there. Um, as they say, you can go fast alone or far together. Faster together. Faster together. Mm -hmm. if, if the rationale is, you know, I want to protect my technology team, they, they need to focus, they need to get Correct. things done. I would say that the argument is that they need to focus on the right things. And so, you know, so much about technology isn't what you build, but what you don't build. And you have to have that context in the technology team of why you're making these decisions. Because mm -hmm. uh, the key thing about technology is that um, at an executive level, you're going to hear about one decision, but every day the whole team are making thousands of tiny decisions about what direction they go in, how deep they go on a certain problem. 
And if that context doesn't exist in that team, particularly at a leadership level, you're going to have a huge amount of problems. Well, I think, you know, I think first of all, having a, a broader spectrum of leaders involved in the program gives diversity of thought. It can bring in um, fresh ideas, um, highlight you know, areas of opportunity that may not have been thought about. I think the video definitely gets you into the room before you're into the room. So I think that's really important. Um, in fact, I usually watch the videos once at homework and once right before we had the session just to get back in the room. Um, and then the transcripts were really useful too, to be able to like go, right, I need to think about this a bit more and a more um, process, process this a little bit more. The case studies were amazing. There was a spectrum of different use cases that were, some were relevant to us, some weren't, but it gave us some useful insight to how to treat uh, that next session that was coming up. So I found that the videos educated me. I got to learn, which I enjoy learning. I think we're all really, really fast learners that you kind of have to be, but to actually go, I'm going to learn this concept and dedicate. I mean, really they're five or 10 minutes each. So the, they, they educated me in the homework reinforced the learning that created the collaboration that we needed just to start as in pull out the insights see a few things where we're heading in kind of different directions or if it's a completely new model we were quite excited about brainstorming around this new model that we're applying something to and then the there was a third element which was the review with you which was to point us back in the right direction. Um, but also where we'd sometimes trailed off and thought of things, you'd, you'd say, hey, this is great. That's actually, you know, because sometimes we could identify or just through our inertia, know what the next thing should be, even if we didn't know what the next activity was because it felt like we should go there. And so making sure that we'd, if, if we had watched the video properly, then we were educated and prepared. Doing the homework together meant that we had better alignment or at least that we knew where we were divergent or where the gaps were. And then the final session would get us into alignment and get us agreed. And that's also the reason why I think it was great that we were all involved because a big outcome of this process was alignment and alignment through the journey is much easier than alignment at the end of the journey. That's, that's not, I don't, I don't know how you'd achieve that. You know, we had some real breakthroughs as a team. All of the assets that we made together, um, we're now using day-to-day in the business. We're using them between ourselves as sort of like the senior execs or the founders to make decisions. We're using them to communicate what we're doing with the team and collaborate. Um, I'm also using them with investors to describe some of the strategic decisions or the why behind the strategic decisions, um, which is really useful for me when often talking to investors, you're selling your insight or your I want to say you're selling your in, you're selling that you have the right instincts and they want to back someone with the right instincts because they don't know this market. They don't know really how it's going to work, but they want to know that you can work it out. Mm-hmm. And now we, I think we have a better level of insight behind the instincts and frameworks behind the instincts to help actually explain what those instincts are and why. If we hadn't done the program, I think we'd have less alignment as a, as a team. Um, alignment is actually a theme now in the business. So we, each time we make decisions and it's not, you know, we're making constantly, we're making decisions every day that affect the work we're doing, the team, the strategy, like that's the life of a startup. It's stopping and reflecting on is in alignment or if it's a change, what do we need to do to realign? And it's a word we're using every day. Whereas previously, I think we would make decisions and we would act on those decisions. And then there was parts of the business that we didn't align to those decisions because as three co-founders, it just felt like we were aligned, but we actually didn't forcibly align other activities to what those changes were. I think it's everything. I think it's alignment between us three and our goals, mm. alignment between our teams, alignment between our goal or our, our go-to-market strategy and the types of partners we're working with, alignment in the technical decisions we're making yeah. and we're making trade-offs in the conversations we're having with customers or promises we're making to customers today, the product roadmap has to be in alignment. I would say something that's really important to me in a startup is you have to have this good sense of as you make, as you're having visionary sales with customers, you're aligning everything to this vision. And that's really, really easy to do when there isn't a live product with customers, with a team that's been working on it. It's, you know, when you're just selling a vision, there's this theoretical thing, sell the vision, then build it. But the reality is you're constantly changing what that is and you have to let the tail kind of realign. Um, otherwise, we would. And I think we probably had a little bit of a sense of drift from our first few customers who are drifting among their needs rather than realigning what we needed to achieve with those customers for then future customers. Yeah, I'd say so alignment between strategy, execution, product, team, individuals within teams, yeah. finance. Um, On the why that serves that as well. Yeah, the why, why we're here, the, the resourcing requirements, even big picture things like the goals and the metrics or the big, the big numbers we want to achieve, the small decisions we're making today drastically affect those numbers, so making sure everything lines up. 
Yeah, the impact of not having the alignment as a result of this work would be that we would continue to try and be awesome at everything. But I think now we've got alignment on where that white space is that we really agree we want to be awesome at and lead that category in. And then there's the stuff that we're happy to give up or deprioritize as well. So yes, we can't be awesome at everything, um, but what we want to be awesome in is something that we're all well on. If I think about where we gained alignment, it's that, you know, if we look at say our go-to-market and we know the exact groups of customers quite specifically that we're targeting and you know we've done the research now to know exactly why we're targeting them we've been able to align how we go to market for sales and what partnerships we have with our technical roadmap and if we hadn't have done that we wouldn't have been able to line up all that work together so we wouldn't be able to move on those customers in the same way with the same focus we've definitely had a higher quality like level of decision making what i think we were doing is potentially making less effective decisions that would make a scale slower. But eventually, you know, in, in a few weeks we go, hey, we, we look at the decision, go, hey, this one was, this is one to reflect on. And we were making, I think, the right decisions at those points, but we weren't zooming out and going, we can probably make a series of these decisions today so that we are aligned. Or, you know, if you think of it as like, we're aiming the rocket ship the right way, the, the alternative is you get there slower. Yeah. Well, and when you get to your destination slower, then you're giving time for competitors to enter your space. When you get to the destination slower, it's costing you more money because a lot of our expenses are you know a month to month. Correct. So you use resources less efficiently. We can make a series of these now and really aim and point the rocket ship the right way and go from there. And it's that's big. the alignment. Did you think that you were focusing on the right thing before the program? I think we felt that there was like that lack of alignment before the program so yeah. we, we are focused on the right thing post the program and i think we also have the right framework for knowing that you know a lot of you know often that's based on gut yes. instinct it feels like we're working on the right thing but it's not so uh, opinionated now it's more we have done hard work a lot of homework uh to then back up that we are doing the right thing and we're focused on the right thing for the right reason end of session <laughs> The book educates you, it sets a good foundation, it's useful. So I'd recommend reading the book because when you come into the sessions, have a better baseline understanding, but the book isn't about applying. The book gives you some tips, it gives you case studies, it gives you examples. Also, you do you have a probably a more focused, or you have a different take on some of the insights in the book, a more focused, maybe more relevant to our stage. I'd yeah. say like there was parts where I could say, oh, this is slightly different to the, you know, the, the tr yeah, like the traditional model versus the Joseph Fig model. Yeah. But I could see, see, see why it was adapted. Um, yeah, yeah, that's adapted. why I used the word adapted. Yeah. If you read the book and it gets you excited, which is what it did for me, the next evolution of that is doing the program, doing the program, because yeah. that's how you then go great. All these how ideas, do how do I apply them to the business mm -hmm. and bring everyone because we I had an aha moment reading the book. And I think everyone would have an aha moment reading the book. As in, it might not seem profound or it might seem obvious. Yeah. The moment I had was all my instincts and what I've got in my head is strategy and how I approach startup building. Someone's actually written about that and said why it works and given me examples. Yeah. Now I need to learn how to apply all that yeah. to the business. And yeah. that was the program. Plus more. Plus more. Plus more value.